These look like hockey sticks, but they're hollow. Now this particular one unscrews here, but there are other ones that uns uh, unscrew at the top of the handle. And you pour in your herbicide dilution here, it's two parts water and one part uh, Roundup. And you screw the top on. Of course, you do want to wear protective clothing when you're doing this, like this. And, and then what happens is that this bottom part here, which looks like a roller to paint, uh, put paint on a wall, becomes saturated in the herbicide. For example, in the situation that I'm in right now, I have Himalaya blackberry growing amongst a tree that I'm, a native tree that I want to protect. So I would just use the, the wick and only touch the foliage of the plant I wanted to control. And I can go in deeper and touch it, and I can completely stay away from the tree and, and contacting the foliage uh, in that way. You could also use this for ground applications of various types of weeds that were lower, um, or for even eucalyptus trees like I see around me right in here that are small. The advantage to a wick ap uh, applicator is that there's no drift potential. So you're just wiping on the herbicide on the plant and you're not producing any kind of a mist. The disadvantage is it's a little bit more labor intensive and sometimes you get in too much contact with the herbicide so you have to wear a lot of protective clothing. Now we're going to talk about a different kind of spot treatment technique and this was developed by Dr. Phil Motuoka at the University of Hawaii and it basically uses a Caltrans type uh, spray gun except with a really fine orifice disc on the end and you use a very concentrated herbicide solution and put out uh, really ultra low volumes uh, like two to five gallons per acre and we're going to start out by calibrating three two one go and with this with this application you put out a very a very small um, very low volume application of two to five gallons per acre but this is a really concentrated herbicide solution that has uh, 10 to 20 percent herbicide in it. Uh, so you're, you're kind of you're kind of uh, uh, switching the spot treatment on its head. Very low volume, high concentration. 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. That's 700 mils per minute. Based on the calibration we just did, I should be able to treat this 10 foot by 20 foot, this 200 square foot patch of uh, yellow flag iris. Uh, it sh if we're trying to put out a spray volume of five gallons per acre, we should be able to cover that in seven and a half seconds. It's a very low spray volume, but we're using a high concentration of, um, of uh, an aquatic registration of a mazapir called Habitat. And our target species here is yellow flag iris. It's invasive around ponds in the western states. And we've tried doing conventional treatments with a spray boom before, but as soon as you step into the iris, uh, you're up to your knees in mud because we're in the edge of a pond. So by using this aquatic registered herbicide and a drizzle technique that throws the herbicide 20 feet, we can treat from the edge of the pond uh, without getting wet. And now, let's see, I need to spend about seven and a half seconds on this area. Can you help me time that? Three, two, one, start. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven and a half. Okay, now I didn't just hold the stream in one place. I was, I was kind of waggling it all over. And the effect of that is to spread the drops out, to spread the stream out. So I hit as many of the branches and leaves of the iris as I can. And those drops will not only hit leaves, but they'll uh, break into other droplets and uh, hopefully hit most of the iris. And the way it's worked out in years past uh, in, in treating a patch like this, it's worked really well, this exact same treatment. And right next to this patch, I think you can see a patch where I've treated iris in the past and, and gotten nearly complete control using a drizzle treatment. We've talked quite a bit about controlling herbaceous plants, but now we're going to talk about controlling woody plants. And there's really three methods of controlling woody plants. One of them is through basal bark treatments. Another one is stem injection and also cut stump treatments. And we're going to look at all three of those treatments. These are all stem applied ap or herbicide application treatments. So the cut stump treatment can be done in many ways. Now this tree normally can just be cut straight across, but we're going to simulate what you would do with a larger tree. 
the first thing you do is cut a notch in the tree in the direction that you want the tree to fall. And then you cut the tree from the other end, allowing it to fall. Now notice that the surface is not going to be straight, but you can come below that surface and cut a straight edge on it so that you can apply the herbicide immediately after you cut the tree. It's important to add a dye to the herbicide formulation so you know where you apply the herbicide and what trees you apply the herbicide to. Any herbicide added to the center of that tree, which is dead wood, will do no good and is a waste of compound. Now Guy is going to demonstrate a stem injection technique. Now we're doing this on Tree of Heaven, and you can do this type of a treatment on a large tree as you can on a cut stump treatment, which is on large trees. What you do is you add one hack with an axe every three inches of stem diameter. So this tree is going to have about three hacks in it. Into that hack, you're adding undiluted down to about 50% herbicide solution. This is the same you would use in a cut stump treatment. Uh, you add that herbicide immediately after you hack the tree. Guy just demonstrated a basal bark treatment. A basal bark treatment is a lower concentration of the herbicide, normally about 20-25% of an herbicide, but where it differs from a cut stump and a stem injection treatment is that those treatments can use either the ester formulation or they can use an amine formulation. This one always has to be an ester oil soluble formulation. Again, this treatment has to be applied in the fall when the translocation of the, of the sugars are going downward and the tree shouldn't be cut until the following season, giving it time to act.